We're going to call to order the November 15, 2016 meeting of the Lake Mills City Council. Let's rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mr. Scharr? Here. Mrs. Fritch? Here. Mr. Foster? Here. Mr. Knipple? Here. And Mr. Fritch and Mr. Kirkovich previously informed staff that they would be unavailable for tonight's meeting. Okay, that moves us into the correction and or approval of the City Council minutes for November 1, 2016. I have a motion of approval. So moved. Second. Seconded. And a vote, please. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Sharp? Aye. Motion passed 3 0. That moves us into correspondence. Start with, with you, Diane. Um, no uh, extensive correspondence. Um, did have a couple people question whether we had a date for the uh, um, visits with the council members thing that we do, and also whether there were going to be any more police department meetings. The, the book, with, well, it was breakfast, but yeah. I'd sort of like to see it in the evening or after, at the end of the day. So a lot of people can't make it yet in the morning. I told them I didn't think there were any dates yet, was I right, Steve? As far as you know? Yeah. Okay. Anything else? No. no. Please? Um, yeah, actually, the uh, Lake Mills Elm Club, which is a club at the high school, has brought up that there is very few recycling bins um, downtown that are easily accessible, and they would actually like to offer to pay to put some in. So I think I'll bring that up for future agendas. Rudy? Nope. And nothing for me. That moves us into questions and public comment and seeing nobody out there, I think we can bypass with public comment. Do we want to let the police chief speak so he doesn't have to stay for the whole meeting? And the reason I came for public comment Did you? Um, yeah, can you come up to the we need to read it then? Um, Probably. It, let, just state why you showed up. Don't go into anything else other than that. Right. Yes, uh, good evening. Uh, the, the reason I came this evening was simply uh, to address if there was any public concern regarding that Tyranina run uh, this year. I understand there was some concerns last year. I wanted to be here to address any, if anybody had any problems uh, this year. So we all got a memo from him. Mm -hmm. yep. And um, I think the idea of doing the, um, talking to the state and putting something on the interstate to yes. give them warning is a really good idea. Yes, it, that's definitely one thing that we're gonna look at next year. We should be able to do that. Um, I personally appreciated the extra effort from the police department to make Thank things you. go smoothly and and your work with the community people to help everybody get them all on the same page. Good. Thank you. Anything else? It went much smoother this year. Thank you. I think okay. that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And that brings us to the city manager's report. Uh, Steve? Well, the only thing attached to your agenda is the police report for the month. Um, I did want to note that um, I have been attending the Rock Lake Management Plan Advisory Committee meetings for the council, and that we've had several to date, um, and that's proceeding forward. Um, we also are having the lead and drinking water informational meeting coming up on December 7th at 6.30 p.m. in the municipal building here downstairs. And we'll have um, the DNR 
the Department of Health Services, the Jefferson County Health Department, and the Light and Water Department representative. So it will be a good meeting that people will want to attend. Other than that, I don't have anything unless you have any questions. I have a comment. I just want to commend uh, Misty and the staff on uh, Election Day and how smooth that ran. That was wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, she didn't, I, didn't look tired at all. I'd like to ditto that and the fact that um, I did have some voters comment as they were leaving the building. They thought they were impressed with how smoothly it ran and how well organized it was. Thank you. She averaged three voters a minute. Based on the ones that came through, yes. And then also incorporating our absentee ballots into the machines during that time as well. So I think it ran pretty smooth and Blaze got to participate as well. So you got to see some of it firsthand too. It was a, was a 80% turnout? It's, it's hard to, to give an exact percentage because it's based on registered voters. Where we were um, a few weeks prior to election, it would have been closer to 88%, but based on what the county was using, they were saying it was about 80%. So until we get everything out. entered in, in about a month, we won't know exact turnout, but yeah. good turnout. Yeah, great job. And then uh, if I could actually just, Steve, can I just talk about this here? Um, on the, the note of elections, um, we're already looking forward to the spring election. I have to notice that to the paper. Um, they published it, the last leader, and they'll be put in the next one, uh, the notice of the spring election, which will be April 4th. Uh, the offices for Lake Mills will be Councilperson District 1, the incumbent Diane Fritch, and Councilperson District 2, Rudy Shar. And papers can begin uh, circulation on December 1st, and the final day for filing is 5 p.m. on January 3rd. And if a primary is necessary, that will be held on Tuesday, February 21st. Thank you. Um, I just want to make one comment, Steve. I was kind of surprised and actually liked what I saw out of the EMS this this month. So um, that was that was kind of nice. So hopefully their their changes over there are starting to make a difference, at least from what I can see. We also need to schedule that meeting. Yep. So okay, we will move on to the acceptance of minutes of the. Joint Rock Lake Committee, September 6, 2016. The Senior Advisory Board, August 18, 2016. And the Public Works Board, October 11, 2016. They'll go on record as written. <coughs> and we'll move into council business. First order is the license. Do we have that name read? Ashley Strider, it's a tavern operator's license application. Do we have a motion of uh, approval? So move. A second? I'll second it. All right, let's take a vote. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Sharp? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed 3 0. Uh, discussion on electronics recycling. My eyes are bad tonight. Who is going to start this one out for us? Who brought this one up? Well, I asked to have it put on the agenda, but I didn't plan to. I don't have an agenda. I mean, you know, I wanted to know what we could tell the people about what they can do with it, with the electronics. Um, I went back through and gathered information and. Um, um, Back in June, it was announced that uh, effective on June 30th, the committee will no, no longer be uh, pay for the recycling of TV and monitors. I can't hear you. Uh, in June 30th, 2016, the committee will no longer pay for the recycling of TVs and monitors. So the the um, <coughs> program had historically paid for um, the recycling of those items and they've taken them off. Now they will continue to, to uh, recycle a lot of other items, um, but those are the two main ones and they are the most difficult because they, can't, they contain a substantial amount of lead. 
Uh, each one can contain between six and seven pounds of lead in the glass. Uh, so they, they dropped those. Um, and then they held uh, clean sweeps at the Jefferson County Fairgrounds in Jefferson on July 30th from 9 to 11 a.m. Uh, Jefferson County uh, Fair Park again on August 20th from 9 to 11. And then they held one at the Village of Palmyra Public Works Building Saturday, October 29th from 9 to noon. Uh, and the items that they were taking were air conditioners, dehumidifiers, exercise equipment, lawnmowers, refrigerators, vending machines, car batteries, dishwashers, freezers, microwaves, snow blowers, wall ovens, commercial AC units, dryers, grills, no propane tanks accepted. Range tops, stoves, washers, water coolers, water heaters, computers, printers, uh, TVs, monitors, cell phones, computer games, and game stations, stereos, radios, metal lamps, and all small appliances. And that was at the clean sweeps held so far this year. In your October 18th packet, there was um, information that was provided from the um, Jefferson County Solid Waste and Air Quality Committee regarding the Associated Recyclers of Wisconsin. And they, they had uh, requested that a resolution be passed and sent to the governor and, the legisl and your legislative representatives uh, regarding uh, recycling fees um, and what would or wouldn't be recycled. And uh, basically said resolution supporting amendment to, to 2009 Wisconsin Act 50 and to support uh, 2015 Assembly Bill 515. And I and provided a, a copy of the Jefferson County resolution. It also had a, a Jefferson County is hosting an electronic appliance and lawn equipment recycling event. Um, and it basically gave the same information I just read. Um, it then um, provided information on um, Sharp's disposal, which is done at Jefferson County Health Department in Watertown. Uh, we also do Sharp's disposal here. Uh, we also do the drug uh, disposal here. So we participate with them on that. You can dispose of your drugs in the lobby at the police department. So any that's leftover right? prescription drugs you can drop off in there. And there's a whole list of, of participating communities on that. And the uh, Sharps is at the club Public Works Yes, the Lake Mills Public Works building. Um, they did have um, certain electronic appliance, lawn and equipment recycling events um, um, that I have already had listed, and they used to hold them in Watertown and Jefferson and Fort Atkinson and Whitewater. Um, yeah, let's see, Friday, September 23rd at the Watertown Street Department, and Saturday, September 24th, and then Friday, October 7th at the uh, City of Whitewater Public Works Complex. Um, but it used to be that you could drop off at those sites just about any time, but you can't anymore. They're restricted to those city residents and only during the Queen's clean sweep events. Um, Jefferson County is planning to get ready to announce their 2017 clean sweep events. Um, but they haven't done that yet. We'll probably get notice on that coming up here shortly. Um, but they um, have again asked for a contribution which we received on October 26, um, similar to what we did last year. Um, and um, what, what do yeah. home, what do homeowners need to do? Keep TVs and things in their garage until there's a clean sweep that takes them. 
You know, well, you, you can also take them to a recycling uh, facility that takes those. There's one in Waukesha that we use frequently at work. Um, there, there are a couple sites. Um, I mean, Best Buy takes some. Um, John's will take it. The, the easiest way to do it in Lake Mills is John's will take it. They charge 30 bucks, uh, but that's pretty cheap compared to, to some of the other options because you generally pay a fee of some sort wherever you're going and to travel that kind of distance is pretty substantial. So um, that's the easiest way to do it right away or you can store it until a clean sweep comes up or you can find, you know, if you're traveling somewhere um, to a certain place that has these types of uh, facilities, you can do that too. But um, the easiest one if you're in Lake Mills is to call John's or contact John's and uh, schedule for them to pick up. What is that phone number? Do you know? Off the top of my head, no. no. Okay. Can they can it's call on the, the, uh, the It's on the website. Yeah. I think though some we have some citizens that aren't real computer literate, but they could call City Hall and they'd be able to give them the number, wouldn't they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make a comment about the funds that they're asking for, and you know, in the past I I supported it wholeheartedly because you could take your stuff down to Watertown and drop it off and now that you can't because you're not a citizen in Watertown I don't see where that benefits our constituents at all to give money to this program unless they change that policy well the clean sweep program benefits our citizens because they have an opportunity to run down to the fairgrounds and drop off but it's not as substantial as it had been historically yeah, and it's not as easy for them right so it takes a, a lot of planning for them so yeah the the telephone number for john's is 262-473-4700 uh, uh, thank you anything else on that no let's move on to discussion <laughs> decision on the humane society contract could we get that Motion read 161121. City Council motion 16 11 2 1 authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement between the city of Lake Mills and Humane Society of Jefferson County. Whereas section 66.0301 Wisconsin statutes authorize the cities and towns to enter into contracts for the receipt or furnishing of services. And whereas the city of Lake Mills has the responsibility for the provision of animal control services within the corporate limits. Be it moved by, city, by the City Council of the City of Lake Mills, Wisconsin, as follows. Section 1, that the agreement between the City of Lake Mills and the Humane Society of Jefferson County for the year 2017, as requested in the attached letter, is hereby approved. Section 2, that the City Manager is authorized to execute said agreement and take such actions as necessary to implement said agreement. The City Council does hereby approve the agreement. Can I get a motion of approval on this motion? So moved. And a second. I'll second. Let's talk about this a little bit. It doesn't seem like it really went up much, and that was really only just because of uh, growth in the community. Uh, has anybody seen any reason why we shouldn't renew with Jefferson County Humane? I give you lots of reasons why we should. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't think of any reasons why. I mean, they done a pretty good job and you know it was spelled out pretty well in there how many pet owners we have and the amounts of uh, the amount of money they would take uh, would require to keep them up and boarded at that location now there are there are no kill location right I believe <laughs> Yes, and, and most items there are once in a while where they will, but it's very rare. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody else have anything besides me blabbering up here? No? Let's take a vote. Mr. Sharp? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Motion passed 3 0. That moves us on to discussion decision on the WDNR consent order lead service line replacement program. Can you read that motion 161122 please? 
City Council Motion 16-11-2-2, authorizing the City Manager to execute WDNR Consent Order Waiver and Stipulation to implement the Lead Service Line Replacement Program. Whereas the City Council of the City of Lake Mills is responsible for the management and control of the City's water utility. And whereas the City Council of the City of Lake Mills is responsible for maintaining the water distribution system that connects to individual homes and businesses throughout the utility service area. And whereas the City Manager carries out the policies and directives of the City Council and manages the City's workforce and infrastructure. Be it therefore moved by the City Council of the City of Lake Mills, Wisconsin as follows. Section 1. That the State of Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources has presented the City with a consent order, waiver and stipulation intended to implement the lead service line replacement program in the City's water distribution system. Section 2. That the City Council is in agreement with the findings of fact, conclusions of law, and the requirements as set forth in the consent order. Section 3, that the city manager is authorized to execute said consent order and take such actions as necessary to implement and administer said consent order on behalf of the city. Section 4, that the city clerk is directed to send a copy of this motion and the executed consent order to WDNR. Do I have a <coughs> motion of acceptance? So moved. Second. Second. Well, let's have a little discussion on this, shall we? Can I ask why it's <laughs> called the revised? <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, Why is it called a revised motion? Well, let me let me start by saying this. I, I want to make sure that we separate two items. This is the lead service uh, replacement line program consent order. It has nothing to do with the grant. Right. This is totally separate. It, in one way, it may affect the other one, but this is basically an agreement with the DNR and the EPA in, for us to um, come into where we do certain activities um, according to what they expect us to do and that we actually make a, an accurate determination of how many lead services we have. And that's probably the primary issues in here. And then I'll let Vicki, she, we were sent this original order two years ago. I think and so. we've been revising it back and forth for about two years now. Oh, that's why it's called revised. So it's been revised a few times. Okay, got so, it. So uh, I'll let Vicki explain what she wrote. Um, the last time we met with DNR concerning the consent order was in June, and at that time they presented us with a lot of new language in the consent order that wasn't technically required under the law, but was a good idea and it was probably a prelude to what EPA is going to be requiring in the future when it comes to the lead and copper rules. So um, we clarified the language. Uh, there, the language needed to be tweaked <coughs> and made more clear because we were breaking new ground in terms of what it was we were agreeing to do. Um, one thing that, that this order has that previous ones did not have is a schedule of reports that the city is agreeing to create when it does its investigations to try to find who has these lead service laterals. Um, and it's not <coughs> obvious based on the age of your home that you have one or not. So the city will eventually have to go into people's basements and look at their lead service line as it comes into the house to see is it copper or is it lead or some other material. And, uh, uh, and that's important to know so that we can have a lead replacement program. So far the lead replacements had been done where we had to replace 7% of the known lead laterals. Well, the problem is nobody knows how many there are, so it's hard to know what is that 7% each year. And we had been keeping up with it, but we suspect that there's, there's more lead laterals than what we had originally thought and what DNR thought we had. So this very lengthy um, consent order lays out all of the ideas about how that has to be accomplished. and. What do we have to do for homeowners that have a lead service lateral that we want to replace our side, which doesn't go all the way into the home, at the stops at the property line, 
and then from the property line into the home um, this consent order talks specifically about what do we do about those property owners who refuse to pay for their lead service lateral um, to be replaced and there's some additional things we have to do such as offer them filters and do some additional testing and some additional education but DNR is strongly encouraging that everybody replace all the way into the house and this order is what we've agreed to and even though not all of it is technically in the administrative rules by agreeing to this by authorizing Steve to sign it we're basically making it be a requirement that we have to live up to I work closely with um, the public works director and the assistant public works director to be confident that we can actually meet these report requirements and and they're relatively certain that we can and we're going to be looking at the distribution system up to 1975 and um, is our initial goals eventually that we're going to be looking at the entire system but up to 1975 is the benchmark that's in here but but we've got a couple years to to accomplish that Dwayne Vandermus who is the assistant public works director has done some extensive work in going through the minutes of our meetings going way back to try to track which parts of our water distribution system are quite old and map those things so that we can be intelligent about where are we going to look first so that we can have a systematic approach to trying to find the lead service laterals and then we're hoping that that loan program will be in place so that the homeowners that are identified as having lead service laterals from their property line going into their homes will have some means to be able to at least pay part of the cost if not the majority of the costs that would be on their responsibility to, to accomplish so um, it's quite a bit longer than the one that we worked on a couple of years ago and uh, but it's a lot more clear so there shouldn't be any misunderstandings there shouldn't be um, any missed reports or deadlines to have certain things presented to the DNR which has been a source of of issues in the past which is kind of what got us having to do a new one so um, DNR has worked very well with us um, they, even though they are the enforcement authority over us um, they I don't believe that they ever really treated us that way uh, it was more of a collaborative effort for everybody to work together to solve a regulatory concern um, so I, I, I think that it's it should work out very well and let's hope so so we don't have to go down this road again can I ask a question on if a homeowner knows or, or the city identifies that a homeowner has a lead lateral to his property in, to his house from from the uh, city property can if he refuses can we turn the water off mm, I don't believe so Because it seems like the city is going to be penalized for the homeowner's refusal. Not under this order. We're strongly encouraged to replace the entire line all the way into the house. Yeah. But the DNR knows, and so does the EPA, that there isn't anything in the law currently that absolutely requires it. But what we do have to do is identify where is the lead. Um, so that's mostly what this order is going to do is is have a systematic approach for identifying the lead service laterals when they get replaced and to what extent is still a fluid matter um, it's not etched in stone that everybody has to replace it all the way into their house 
I, I suspect in a few years it could be, but of course politics changes all the time, so uh, it might be that um, the push to take care of this issue won't be as strong with current or future administrations as it had been. We, <clears throat> we need to be careful. Yeah. The push will be to replace the lead all the way into the house. <clears throat> it will not require, it does not currently require replacement of all the plumbing in the house. So anything from the meter out to the street is being pushed to be replaced. Mm -hmm. um, there has been discussion about replacing anything that has even lead solder in it. So if you had a copper system installed pre-1986 and the solder had lead in it, there is a push to have all that removed. That could be pretty substantial. That could be a real issue. Uh, even this is a real issue, and, and <clears throat> so I, I want to go over a couple things. We, we had to create a program um, to meet the s standards that are required in this. So we have to report every six months on how many lead services we found because they want to know how many total lead services we have because the order says that we have to police, replace 7% of known lead lateral services annually. So with 37, we only have to replace three annually, and if you replace nine in one year, you've got three free years. Um, <clears throat> we could have more lead lateral services than that, and and uh, and so we, we let's say we had 100, we would be replacing uh, substantially more, and if we had 200, it would be more than that. Um, so what we've done is we put together a letter that the, we send out to homeowners and um, asking them to call in and schedule an appointment. Um, and then they call in and schedule an appointment and uh, they start filling out this. And there's a bunch of data in here that gets filled out and um, um, this is basically the process that we follow in order to be able to get in, get it inspected, and get all the data put in the right place and analyzed. Because every six months, we have to fill out another report and send it to the DNR. And so you have this form being filled out, and then the person going in and doing the work has to know how to, to uh, come on. identify a lead lateral service and, and this is where you're working from so this is the meter in your house so this is <clears throat> the water's coming in and going into your house and then this is going to service the rest of the house so this is the portion that we're testing and this runs runs out to the street uh, and so we need to get in and test this part to determine if it's lead, and we go through that process. Um, based on the initial work that Dwayne has done uh, in conversations, um, we anticipate that, you know, he's done a lot of, well, he started with the 1887 minutes, which are handwritten, and worked all the way through till the 1950s, um, and made a determination of how many water mains were installed, what timeline they were installed in, what's the likelihood that they had led lateral services, um, and then if they had ever been replaced. And so that's kind of the data that we're trying to determine. So the program, the way we're going to start the inspections is, is the vast majority of all the water mains replaced in Lake Mills have occurred from 2002 till now. Um, and they're the most high risk because the cities replaced their portion of the lead lateral with copper and so there was a disturbance there and it creates a problem with the existing lead and so we want to get out get all those inspected and have those on the list so that when our grant comes through they'll be eligible to get grant funds. The next one that comes up is the um, South Main Street and Mulberry Street projects because as we're replacing those, we want the people who have lead services to replace their portion because we don't want that 
same situation occurring again where we have our portion replaced with copper and then there's remaining lead because that's the highest risk sources. Um, we anticipate that we not every service on those old water mains is going to be lead because when they ran those old services they were a lot of the existing system was built prior to 1914 and a, a substantial amount was was built before 1950 and so there's probably a pretty strong likelihood that those they had lead services in there but the houses were on big lots because a lot of them had carriage houses and some animals and and over the years they split that lot and, and houses were built in between so there's you, know, you might have a 19 an 1887 house next to a, a 1920 house and then another lot over it might be a 1960 house and in those time periods the city changed we noticed we knew in in the 1930s they ran that water main on Griffith so we anticipated finding a lot of lead lateral services they were all copper which came as a surprise so everything that we anticipate isn't guaranteed so when we go out and say well there could be up to 500 lead lateral services that's just saying that based on the way these water mains are done they could have been but then when the real data starts coming in, you're starting to look at maybe less than 50%. So we anticipate somewhere between 200 and 250 possible lead services, but we have to verify those. They have to, we actually have to know, so we have to get into those houses and test. So we, we're planning on 100% of the houses checked in a time period of what? Well, we have to have um, by 19, by uh, the end of 18, we have to have what we believe is a substantial amount of the lead services located. So, you know, there are areas like Brookstone we don't have to worry about. Uh, East Lake Mill, uh, East Mills, um, Arbor Creek, uh, Pinnacle, we don't have to worry about those areas. They're, they're not going to have lead. So we need to concentrate on the areas where we anticipate the lead is. And so we've kind of shifted our capital improvement program to also include like East or West Lake Street, Fremont College, and um, so as we continue to move through, we'll we'll ramp up those areas and and see what we can find. So, I had at least there was one comment here on what I was hearing, and it sounded like for those folks that uh, decide they really can't afford don't want grant money, whatever the case may be, they're looking at helping them with filters, things like that. The issue I see with that is if for some reason that location goes under a loss of pressurization, can't that bring the lead back out into the rest of the water and contaminate other neighbors and other people in that area besides just the homeowners and that that would be a good reason in itself to to get it changed because you're not just affecting yourself, you're affecting the community. I don't know that the filter would be a substantial effect, but the lead lateral itself could. Um, yeah, and I guess what I meant is the filter is only going to protect them as the homeowner inside the home. Um, but if that house lost... Uh, water pressure for whatever reason it could have a backflow and that lead from that lead lateral could get out into the rest of the water yeah but the parts the parts per billion in the long term would be so minimal that it wouldn't be considered a significant health effect it's but if that the happened, long term at a high rate yeah but if that happened to say a hundred of the houses that all had lead laterals and all that stuff flowing back into our water system all at the same time for some major break in a line somewhere that could cause significant uh, potential health issues for the rest of the community because they weren't changed out I, I I'm not going to go there I I don't want to say no but I, I don't think it's it's likely what I would say is uh, if you wanted to sell your house I believe that you're going to have to have that lead lateral replaced. 
because people are going to come into the community and go and they're in the that's like lead paint right now I know they go through the houses and they do an inspection for lead paint if you have lead paint in the house the bank isn't going to lend you money and I anticipate that's what's going to start happening with lead laterals is, is that the bank just isn't going to lend money well, they won't for a home you. until that is replaced yeah your insurance company won't insure you just like if you have a 60 amp service yeah and so I anticipate that those things will become a much greater pressure on residents and so they would be well advised to to replace it as soon as possible um, or at least when the grant money is available I, I would not yeah. pass up a grant opportunity um, because I, I imagine in the long run that that um, that'll be a real issue and, and being able to sell your house will become very difficult yeah. so that would mean that Right now, if we send somebody into the water tower to test or at the outflow from the water treatment plant, we would probably see very, very minimal lead in the water if it was tested at that point. The water at the wells and the water tower is tested regularly, um, and the lead is so low that you can't test for it. So if there's lead in there, it's so little that it, the tests don't go that low. The lead is coming from those lead services running into the home, and and the you know the fixtures and the um, solder in the house, not from the water coming out of the system and being pumped, because there's there's no lead in that system up, up until it hits that that lead lateral service. And we phos we put in phosphate to line those services so. There, we're doing as much to protect those people as we can from our point, but once we disturb it by replacing our portion of that service, they really, that's the greatest risk point. And so people that are in that, that have either had it or are coming up to it should be really paying attention to, yes, we want to get in that grant program or at the least being willing to, to pay to replace their portion. They'll get their money back eventually. Okay. The one, the one other thing I want to note is, is that um, the agreement, it used to be that we were required to give people 45 days notice before we replaced the lead lateral service, but because we didn't know where any lead lateral services were, it rarely happened. We would dig up and find lead lateral services and then we'd go up and knock on the door and say, hey, do you want to replace your service? And they're like, how much? And then they go, no, we're not interested. Uh, we now are required to give them 45 days notice from the date of the start of the construction project. So you may get a notice about possible lead lateral replacements when the project starts and you don't have a lead lateral service. But you're going to get noticed because you're part of that construction project. Um, and that's just, we had to do they we had to do something and they wanted that 45 day notice out there <coughs> and so that was the agreement we came to that was one of the things where it's not technically required by any law but we agreed to it because there's there's no good way to make that program work in a city where you don't know where your ladder your lead laterals are so say we're we're doing a construction contract we know well in advance of digging in the ground uh, at least 45 days before we've dug, we know we're doing a project unless it's an emergency project. So what this is requiring us to do is to send the same kind of a notice to somebody that we already know has a lead lateral and that we are going to replace it. This is one that says we're going to be doing this project and in the event that you have a lead lateral when we get there, you're going to be asked if you want to replace it, but we don't at this time know you have a lead lateral, so the notice would be a little bit different. The only other thing that, that's in here that hadn't been in here before is if there's an emergency, like there's a water main break and they get in there and they're digging in the ground, they find a lead service line, um, at that point we don't have to give a 45-day notice because that would be kind of ludicrous. The work has to be done right then. We have to work with the property owner to try to get the property owner to replace their portion if it's lead, 
but um, we don't have to give a 45 day notice but we do have to do testing both before and after we make that that replacement so that we can keep an eye on whether or not there is lead particulate that got disturbed and it's in their water system and that's just in so their that house they know testing, right what that's in their house testing right and the testing to find out if you have a lead service lateral won't take hardly any time at all. I volunteered my house to be a test house um, and uh, the gentleman that works for the city came down in my basement, took a screwdriver, scraped on the pipe in the right location and he says, oh, here's his copper, which was a surprise to me. And uh, so mine isn't gonna be tested. So. Uh, you can't really go by the age of the home um, and unless it's a such a new home that then there's no way there's going to be any lead because it wasn't allowed but even on these older homes like mine was built in 1930 and uh, apparently they were using copper as we're finding out from Griffith Street also uh, so we can't assume that there's lead just because the house is older all right Thank so you. Is anybody the, the letter that you had up there now has that been sent out yet to no, anybody? We, we aren't starting until January the first week in January. And um, and will it be the South Main Street project that'll get that first? No. Um, oh, the first areas will be the projects that we did from two thousand and two to two thousand and fifteen. Oh, okay. And those people are the highest at risk because we've already replaced the, our portion of the lead. And so there's copper there. So there's been that kind of separation. And if they, so they, if they still have lead, they're the ones that should have the opportunity to replace theirs first. Then we'll go to South Main and then Mulberry because they'll be the ones that'll be having theirs replaced next. Mm -hmm. And then, so that's the process. Uh, as you know, we only received three hundred thousand um, dollars the estimate is somewhere between three thousand and thirty five hundred dollars to replace that portion of the lead lateral service from the house out to the curb so you're looking at between 90 and 100 people getting grants so you're going to you're going to want to jump on it quick when you have the opportunity okay okay is there anything else not we already have a motion and second can we call the row uh, call a vote excuse me mrs fritch aye mr foster aye mr shard aye motion passed three zero all right that brings us to the discussion decision on awarding the 2016 grave open and closed contract meitner land services llc could i get that read please City Council Motion 16-11-2-3, authorizing the City Manager to execute an agreement between the City of Lake Mills and Meitner Land Services. Be it moved by the City Council of the City of Lake Mills, Wisconsin, as follows. Section 1, that the agreement between the City of Lake Mills and Meitner Land Services, LLC, copies of which are attached hereto and made a part hereof, are hereby approved. Section 2, that the City Manager is authorized to execute said agreement and take such actions as necessary to implement such agreement. The City Council is hereby approved the agreement and authorize the Council President to sign the motion. Is there a motion of adoption? So moved. Second? Second. Is there any discussion? We've used them for quite a while, right? And it was a very minimal raise, so unless there's anything else, call the vote. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Shar? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed 3-0. And next one is uh, Resolution 1649. Uh, establish the fees for operation and use of Rock Lake Cemetery. Could I get that read, please? Resolution 16-49, Resolution Establishing Fees for Operation and Use of Rock Lake Cemetery, Lake Mills, Wisconsin. Whereas Section 7-6-5 of the Municipal Code of the City of Lake Mills authorizes and directs the City Council from time to time to establish a schedule of fees relating to the use and operation of Rock Lake Cemetery. Now therefore be it resolved that the attached proposed price increases for year 2017 shall be in effect from and after January 1, 2017. Is there 
a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Second. Same discussion. Anybody like fifteen dollars? Yeah, it just took the contract you just approved and passed all those on yeah. to the fees. Yep. Let's. I just have a question. Go ahead. Um, how come we kept it the same for the disinternment? Because he didn't. He didn't uh, raise that price. I don't know why not, but that's interesting. Okay, I won't complain. <laughs> All right, let's call the vote. Mr. Scher? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Motion passed 3 0. The one thing, Diane, is, is that the, I've only seen it done once since I've been here. Oh, so it's not a common fee? No. Mm -mm. That brings us to Resolution 1650, authorize, Authorizing Application for Large-Scale Lake Management Planning Grant, WDNR. Could I get that read, please? Resolution 16-50, authorizing the City of Lake Mills to apply for a large-scale lake management planning grant from the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Whereas the City of Lake Mills is interested in acquiring a cost-share grant from the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources for the purpose of completing a mill pond and channel dredging feasibility study. And whereas the applicant attests to the validity and veracity of the statements and representations contained in the grant application, and whereas a grant agreement is requested to carry out the project, now therefore be it resolved that the City of Lake Mills has budgeted a sum sufficient to fully and satisfactorily complete the project and hereby authorizes and empowers the following officials or employees to submit the following documents to the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources for financial assistance that may be available. Each of the following tasks are the city manager is the authorized representative. Sign and submit a grant application. Enter into a grant agreement with the DNR. Take necessary action to undertake, direct, and complete the approved project and bind the applicant. Submit quarterly and or final reports to the DNR to satisfy the grant agreement as appropriate. Submit reimbursement requests to the DNR no later than the date specified in the grant agreement. Be it further resolved that the applicant will comply with all local, state, and federal rules, regulations, and ordinances relating to this project and the cost share agreement adopted this 15th day of November 2016. Is there a motion of adoption? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, discussion. This is for studying for dredging of the mill pond, right? Right. You, we've already budgeted to pay for the whole thing, but if we can get a grant, I figured we'd take the money. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. It drops us down to, what, what is it, 12, 12,000 out of what we have budgeted for? So that's a pretty good chunk of change. When do we, when do we think we're going to start the study? Well, it was scheduled to start next. We've done some work already, but it's scheduled to start primarily next summer. Okay. Anybody else have any questions for this? No. Let's call a vote. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Scharr? Aye. Motion passed 3 0. And this moves us on to Ordinance 1173, <coughs> request to amend zoning. Could you read that, please? Ordinance 1173, amending sections 10 3 2 A, official zoning map, City of Lake Mills, Wisconsin. Parcels 246-0713-1223-004 and 246-0713-123-029-815 Linden Street. The City Council of the City of Lake Mills, Jefferson County, Wisconsin does ordain as follows. Section 1. Section 10-3-2-A, the official zoning ordinance and map of the City of Lake Mills are hereby amended to zone the following described properties from RD Rural Development to R1-4 Single Family Residential. Parcels 246-0713-1223-004 and 246-0713-1223-029-815 Linden Street. Section 2, all ordinances or parts of ordinances inconsistent with or contravening the provisions of this ordinance are hereby repealed. Section 3, this ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon passage and publication as provided by law. Okay, do we have a motion of adoption? So moved. A second? Second. This is an ordinance, so you have to waive the Probably. second reading and go to the third. Did this even? Didn't even say it was a. Well, the, mine. It looks like a motion for regular motion. Yeah. Where's the ordinance? 
Ma, I don't see it. Oh, I see it's on the bottom. Oh, it does. You've got a motion reading. from the plan commission. Yep, yep. yep. Oh, got that's it. what we were looking at. Okay. That was the first reading. So we don't have. Do we have to push this? You do not have to push this through, but um, we annexed it as part of the um, Culver's project. So that was all an agreement that the city council agreed to to do this, and the plan commission has recommended it. So if you wanted to move it to the third, you can, but you don't have to. I mean, it's been there. I, I move that we uh, we um, suspend suspend the second reading and go directly to the third reading this evening, or go next. Go to the third, to reading. The third reading. Yeah. And is there a second? Second. Uh, take a vote. Mr. Foster. Aye. Mr. Shar. Aye. Mrs. Fritch. Aye. Motion passed three zero. Okay, so now we're on the third reading. And I think you can just read the title again, right? Yep. Ordinance 1173, amending sections 10 3 2 A, official zoning map, City of Lake Mills, Wisconsin, parcels 246-0713-223-004, and 246-0713-122-123-029-815 Linden Street. Okay. Now, is this because we went from township to city? Yes. No change really, but just in the when we annexed it, it automatically annexes in as RD. Oh, and then and you have to move yes. it from that then to the to single to family. The, yeah. Okay, got it. No problem. Okay, so now we can get a motion for. I think we already did that. Yeah, we did. So we have that. Yeah. Okay, and yeah, this went through the planning commission, and all the findings of fact came out to say there should be no reason not to do this so mm -hmm. unless anybody else has any other discussion on this, this is just those little parcels that are stuck between the cemetery and the new is that elm? street yep elm, elm street okay yeah. call vote. just for clarification was it rudy with the first yep. motion rudy. on yes. that okay yes, i had it for the to move it but um mr Shar. Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Motion passed 3 0. And that moves us into recommendation for future agendas. And I know Blaze had the one. Yeah, just a discussion on the Elm Club adding some recycling bins downtown. Have, did your club identify where they currently are? N no, the, uh, the problem is the lack of them. So there's, there are none? Yeah, I, not that I know of, no. So. so I guess, yeah, we'd have to we'd have to know a few things then to go along with that is not only where they're going to be placed and how they're going to be maintained, who who cleans them, who takes care of them. Yeah. So. so do we need to pass that to Rob? You'll take care of that? Yeah. Okay. Does anybody have anything else? Okay, so um, just should mention that there is an open house tomorrow night at the Public Works building from 3.30 to 6.30. And we'd like to encourage the public to come out. That's on, uh, okay, what is that street called? Industrial Drive? Yes, Industrial Drive. Industrial Drive, Drive. it's the new one. And um, so I'd like to see the public there. All right. And I think. I think we need a motion to convene into closed session. So moved. Second. 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 We need a vote. Um, someone has to actually state the entire body of oh. that motion. So we need a motion to convene into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin statutes 19.851C, compensation and performance evaluation data of, of employees over which the governmental body as jur jurisdiction or exercise responsibility. And we have Rudy with the motion. And I okay, second. now we can call the vote. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Sharp? Aye. Motion passed 3 0. All right, we are in closed session. Meet in a few minutes over in the other room. <laughs>